Hello everyone, my name is Valeria de la Rosa Reyes. I'm a PhD candidate from the University of Puerto Rico Medical Science Campus in the Department of Anatomy and Neurobiology. And I work with Dr. Blanco at the Institute of Neurobiology. I want to talk to you about my project entitled Retinoic Acid Application Transitly Increases Microglia and Macrophages Population After the Optic Nerve Injury in Ranapipians. So let's begin. One of the main problems in the mammals is the central nervous system regeneration. It's a lack of or a really poor regeneration of this system. You, when you have a lesion, you will see both stumps and degenerating. And you see a glial scar formation where macrophages, microglia, astrocytes, and some other cells will come up. Therefore, we need a highly capable of regenerating model to elucidate what is how we can make it work. The retinal ganglion cells of the ranopipians have a 50% survival once you have an axotomy or optic nerve injury. And at one week you start to see the axonal regrowth. In six weeks you see they're reaching the target in the tectum. And in three months or a little more, you see the recovery of function, gain of vision. There's a lack of inhibitory environment and the accessibility of the nerve in this model. One main factor that we have is retinoic acid, the mediator of vitamin A. It is important for development, you know, and there's evidence that it has a supporting role in the neurite outgrowth, the neural survival, and in synaptic plasticity. And we have proven this in our laboratory in, in our model. So we want to work and evaluate the role of macrophages. First, macrophages have two main populations, or they are classified in two main populations. One is the phagocytic cells, the M1, and the M2, which are more pro-repair cells. In the frogs, you will see similar polarization as in mammals with these two big classifications. Therefore, the objective of this study is to elucidate the role of retinoic acid application in the macrophages and macroglia, as well as the axonal regrowth. We, we will perform optic nerve injury and apply the either saline solution or retinoic acid. And then we will evaluate macrophages populations. So here you have a diagram, the retinoid ganglion cells in your left in the retina, axons projecting through the nerve towards the tectum that should be or imaginary in the right. And uh, therefore, what we do more in details methods, <clears throat> we cause an optic nerve crush using a forceps. We leave the meningeal sheet intact and then we apply retinoic acid to the area, let it rest and then suture and let the frog recover until one week or two weeks. Once the time has gone, we will fix and embed uh, the tissue in epon araldite. We will cut this uh, tissue using the ultra microtome in one micron sections and then we stain them with methylene blue and vaccine pushing red. Once we know that we reach the targeted area, evaluating using the light microscopy, we will cut ultra thin sections using that are between 30 and 100 nanometers and we uh, place them in the grid <clears throat> to evaluate in the transmission electron microscopy. So these are uh, light microscopy images, transverse view of the optic nerve. In the upper panel we have the control or the injury one and then in the lower panel you have the injury and the retinoic acid application of the nerve in the nerve. 
you can see we found that the retinoic acid treatment increases the macrophages in the optic nerve after the axotomy and that <clears throat> this it appears to be double the amount of macrophages in these nerves you can see <clears throat> so once we knew there were higher amount of macrophages we wanted to know further what types of macrophages or so on and we found that the microglia also increase or appear in more amount in the nerves that were applied that retinoic acid were, was applied and uh, here's here you have some fluorescent images optic nerve in the first column optic nerve transverse view in the upper panel is the control the injure plus the saline solution and the lower panel is the injure and the retinoic acid application as you can see in the middle of uh, the cells in the <clears throat> low magnification and in high magnification in the right panel and it was significantly different so we want to further you know, evaluate these um, cells ultrastructure of the cells and we found that there were no difference between the peripheral and the central macrophages but we saw that there were lower density of macrophages in the uh, saline or control versus the retinoic acid application. And it appears to be like fuller or more phagocytic cells. But we need to confirm that with some more quantification evaluation. So now at, we wanted to know if that this effect or increase of cells was sustained and at two weeks we saw that they were decreased and returning to the control levels of <clears throat> of um, macrophages so it appears to be transient and when we look further in details how these macrophages are doing they appear to be really full with a lipid inclusions instead of more debris as we saw in the one week macrophages. So it appears to be that they are not uh, like the work is more done and they're just finishing uh, the cleaning area. And <clears throat> so the other thing we wanted to do uh once we saw that we want to evaluate the role of macrophages by themselves so we do a uh, macrophages depletion using the chlorinate liposomes so we apply that to the injured area as we used to do with the saline solution or retinoic acid and we observe at one week that there was effective that not macrophages or really few macrophages were in the area and you can see here in the upper panel the control and in the lower panel the chlorinate liposomes application you can see uh, the nerves this one the upper has a lot of cells and some degeneration starting but the lower panel you see a lot of myelin or debris like no one is cleaning the area <clears throat> so in conclusions uh, we have a treatment of the optic nerve after axotomy with retinoic acid which increases the number of phagocytic cells present near the site of the injury and the increased number of macrophages microglia cells in retinoic acid nerves <clears throat> is transient at two weeks we didn't saw these macrophages in that higher number as we saw in one week and they appear <clears throat> the ultrastructural characteristics of these cells they appear in large amount of phagocytic back walls and one week you can see this multilamellar bodies and as and especially in the retinoic acid applications it appears to have like an increase in this phagocytic activity but we were we have to confirm in the future uh, with more with the quantifications with 
uh, actual finishing this <clears throat> in the near future. So I want to acknowledge, thank you uh, to my lab partners and my, doc, my PI, Dr. Blanco, the uh, lab technician, Clarissa del Cueto, and the undergrad, uh, Andrea Maldonado, for the help and their support. And of course, I want to <clears throat> thank all the funding. And I want to thank you for your attention here. So please come along, make your questions, let me know your comments. Thank you so much. Have a great day.